So I mentioned that we're mathematically alive. We are not completely eliminated from playoff contention. The New York football giants are still in the hunt. They're still in the playoff picture for the the NFC. Yeah, a lot of people think this, this season's over, and I get it, but that's not fun. And I like to be fun. And I want this season to be fun because it's been such a goddamn depressing shit show for so long. The fact that we have any kind of life and chance at the playoffs is just, we need to embrace that shit. <laughs> like, the fact that we were talking about if we beat the Saints, we're now like, we're almost like, we're about to get the seven seed. That's incredible considering where we where we started and where we came from. So. I'm going to continue to hold on to that until they tell me to, please, sir, let go. This is a Denny's. Like, I want someone to say, until they say officially eliminated, I'm going to, I'm going to roll with this. So how delusional am I, right? Everyone's like, uh, everyone's tossing the towel. Everyone's thrown in their hat, right? They're like, no, nay. We're, they're giving eulogies left and right. And I say this. Did you think that the Seahawks would beat the Eagles with Drew Locke? Eh, maybe. Eagles are winless in Seattle. I think they're like 0-10, 0-7 or something like that. Jalen Hurts had some kind of illness, had to fly on a a completely separate flight than the rest of the team. Darius Slay was out. Cam Jurgens is out. It was rainy. Who's to say that doesn't happen again next week? Sure, the Rams uh, have looked really good against some really good teams. Beat the fuck out of the Browns. And they were running away with the game against the Commanders, but if you look at the final score, it's 28-20. Those are two teams we're facing the next three games. So it's like... I choose to believe that the Eagles are in a landslide. They're, this is their, this is a monumental collapse, and this is a downfall of epic proportions. I'd like to, I'd like to believe that, and I'd like to see that through. Wouldn't it be nice? It's just like the, the wheels have come off. Their defense is not the defense from last season, and uh, you know their offense is not the same offense. Would it be nice if Lane Johnson decided to take a a surprising vacation on another planet that would be great or if he like his groin exploded and somehow he wasn't able to sew it up and stitch it up and go out in the field because when lane johnson plays they win when they don't when he doesn't play they lose so it's like if someone i don't know maybe tommy devito's agent can man can put this together can ensure that lane johnson doesn't play that would be fantastic so how do the New York Giants make the playoffs in 2023 <laughs> at five and nine with three to play? We have less than a 1% chance of making the playoffs. There's a 99 point some odd percent chance that we're not going to make the playoffs. There's still, there's still, you tell me there's a chance. So here's what has to happen. I have decided to play around with ESPN's playoff machine. It's sad that I forgot about it and I haven't been using it, but it's like when I didn't really need to use it for a lot of years. <laughs> so I've rediscovered it and I fucking love it. Typically, I look at playoff status, even when we're having a shit season, I'm like, well, you know, we still have a 1% chance. I've run a couple scenarios to the playoff machine and there is a scenario and it's not very hard to envision, and I can't believe it's only we have only less than 1% chance because I do believe the season is cray-cray. The Packers beating the Lions in Detroit on Thanksgiving. Cardinals beating the Cowboys early on in the season. There's a lot of fucking weird shit going on. The, the Bears should have beat the Browns. <clears throat> Friggin' Mooney. Just needs to hold on to the ball on the Hail Mary, and that's that's a Bears upset win. So uh, why wouldn't you just say, fuck it, yeah, we're going to win? Here's how we do it. Here's how we make that postseason, and here's how we do the unthinkable, the impossible, if you will. We run the table. We beat the Eagles in Philly on Christmas Day, a place where we don't usually win. Merry Christmas. 
Merry Christmas, y'all. We beat the Rams on our home turf in the new year. Hey, new year, new you. It's New Year's Eve, sorry. But what better way to welcome in the new year than an upset win against the Rams? Have we had luck against the Rams? No, <laughs> we have not in recent history. We got smoked in 2017, and uh, I don't think we're going to do fare much better against Cooper Cup and Matthew Stafford in that offense. But it's a long season. People get hurt. Things happen. So we beat the Eagles on Christmas Day. We beat the Rams on New Year's, Day, New Year's Eve. And then we face the Eagles on our home turf. Dear God, if we go, if we go two and in the next two games, we're now seven and nine with a chance of making the playoffs against a division rival on our home turf, reminiscent of the 2002 season finale where we win and we're in. We win and I think we're in, but we need a lot of help. So what do we need? What do we need to happen from? The rest, of the, the rest of the NFC, the rest of the conference. Well, in week 16, it would be very nice if the Rams beat the Saints, which, is that far-fetched? No. We do need the Titans to beat the Seahawks. Now, I'll say this. I think a lot of people would say, Eagles fans mostly, the Giants are going to be our get-right game. We're in a free fall, right? The wheels are coming off. We're going to go. We're going to have, we, we are dominant at home. And uh, it'll be nice to get a nice uh, pounding of our division rival, NFC East division rival, on our home turf and get right. For the Seahawks, coming off a monumental win, yes, this could springboard them uh, into the next level and they could get the sixth or the seventh seed and just run the table. They got to feel good about their chances with Drew Locke, right? And the defense is playing pretty well. But this is a trap game. And the Titans, even though they probably don't have Will Levis, are a weird squad where it's like they come out and they can, they can uh, beat a good team. They can come out and lose to a bad team. Uh, divisional games are always a wild time. Like the fact that they lost to Houston is uh, without C.J. Stroud, crazy. But again, Case Keenum, proven, proven quarterback who can come in and win you games. So uh, would you be that shocked if the Titans upset the Seahawks? No. And then the Lions beat the Vikings. Now, the Vikings I've underestimated drastically, and I think a lot of the league has. Uh, I would have thought for sure that they would have been out of playoff contention by now just because I didn't see Nick Mullins as a, as a, as a guy that could carry them. But that defense is legit, and Nick Mullins, pretty good. Probably could have beat the Bengals in Cincinnati against that uh, tough Bengals defense and uh, Jake and Jake Browning, who is just like taken off. <laughs> Lions can beat the Vikings, sure. Vikings then, in week 17, Vikings need to beat the Packers. Bucks need to beat the Saints. Packers are losing their marbles, right? They just uh, got beat by Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield, the first quarterback in Lambeau history, Green Bay Packers history, to have a perfect passer rating in Lambo, whoa, dude, and you know I know people have knocked Baker Mayfield and Giants fans do not have a soft spot and a soft spot in our hearts for Baker Mayfield after his DJ comments, but that's some impressive shit. So do I think Nick Mullins can go and beat Green Bay? Yeah, and we need the Bucks to beat the Saints. You're telling me the Bucs go into Green Bay, beat the Packers. They can't beat the Saints. Then week 18, we need the Cardinals to beat the Seahawks. I don't think that's that crazy. <laughs> like, I, I mean, the Seahawks are a wildly inconsistent team, in my opinion. And sure, they might. this could be them getting hot, and maybe they, they, this is like a December to remember for them. But the Cardinals are also spoilers. They've beaten a lot. Of, they have beaten or have stayed uh, competitive with a lot of good good teams. Play a lot of interesting close games. So I that is not out of the realm of possibilities that the Cardinals can beat can, can't beat the Seahawks or can beat the Seahawks. Lions beat the Vikings again. I think the Lions have probably righted the ship. They played a very good Broncos team 
in Detroit and uh, ran rough shot on the defense. You know, the Broncos defense has really stepped up and is, is really the reason why they've been winning so many games. So maybe that was the get right game for the Lions. And, you know, Dan Campbell was uh, was pretty miffed after the that the previous week's loss and said he was going to he was going to light a fire. And I, I think he did. And I think so now I, it looks like they're on the, the up and up. So I think it's a close game, but I think the Lions can sweep the Vikings. They take the division. The Niners beat the Rams, right? And that's that might come into question, right? Because if that's the season finale, and if the 49ers have that number one seed locked up and the Rams are playing for a playoff spot, that's where it can get tricky, where it's like, okay, Niners are going to sit everyone. Rams are going to like uh, run up the score. And so that's that. Hopefully that doesn't happen. And then the Bears beat the Packers. All that happens. Now, did I say anything that was that outlandish? It's not like we're asking the Panthers to beat anyone. Which, I mean, they just beat the... <laughs> they just beat the Falcons. So it's like... Uh, and, and they took it to the Saints. So, I mean, the Panthers are another team where it's like people think they're just going to lay down. They're, they're four and 10 now or something like that. Panthers could be tricky for a couple guys, a couple teams looking to make the playoffs. So, the way I see it, if all that falls in a line, you'd, ha- you'd have the Niners as the, as the one seed at 14 and three. You have uh, Dallas winning the NFC East at 13 and four, even though, you know, Everyone thought they were going to win the Super Bowl before they played the Bills, and then they got smoked against the Bills in Buffalo, which I saw coming. I definitely, that was not, like, the Bills are on a hot one right now, and they're streaking, and I think the Cowboys got a wake-up call. <clears throat> and it's also like, uh, you know, the Cowboys beat the Eagles, right, handedly, and everyone's like, oh, they finally beat a good team, but it was at home. So can the Cowboys beat a good team on the road? They haven't had to do it yet. Or they haven't done it yet. Uh, so they're the two seed. The Lions will be the three seed winning the NFC North. <laughs> the Bucks, the Baker Mayfield-led Bucks, would get the four seed the NFC South winners at 10 and 7. Eagles will get the five seed at 11 and six, which is, I mean, you know, I pray for days like this, right? Where it's like they started 10 and one, something like that. And to finish 11, and six, right. That would be oh, so juicy. And then the Vikings will get the six seed at eight and nine. And then uh, your, our New York football giants will get the seven seed at eight and nine. That's how it's going to, that's how it's going to play out. So, as a seven seed, we would go to Dallas and play the Cowboys in Dallas. Odds are, <laughs> unless we this is like, you know, I you know this is not 07, this is not twenty eleven. I don't I don't see us going into Dallas and beating Dallas in Dallas. Um, of course, if that if this all goes down the week of that game, I think we're gonna win. <laughs> but as of right now, looking at that, I'm like, eh, yeah, probably not. The six. Seed Vikings would go to Detroit and play the Lions, the three seed Lions, which uh, I got a weird feeling that, okay, the Vikings stick it to the Lions in their two regular season matchups. They face them two of the last three games. They lose both of those games, but then they go into Detroit, and I think they might pull out the upset. And I hate I hate to say it because I want Detroit to go far. Um. I really want the Lions to, I wish they would, I, you know, I don't know how they would take down the 49ers unless, you know, Brock Purdy gets hurt or Debo gets hurt or McCaffrey gets hurt or Kittle gets hurt. But, I mean, I, that was my hope was that the Lions would be our NFC representative in the Super Bowl. That would be so sweet. But, yeah, I can very easily see them losing to the Vikings uh, in the wild card. And then the five-seed Eagles go to Tampa Bay to play the Buccaneers the four seed Buccaneers, which even despite um, an atrocious end to the season for Philadelphia, where they finish like one in five or something like that. Woof. Um, 
I think it's a close game, but I do think that uh, the Eagles pull it out. So, and that's that's my delusional take <laughs> on how the Giants can make the playoffs. Uh, you know, there's three games left, and a lot. I mean, dude, the NFL is a roller coaster week to week. Anyone who can predict, like, no one's predicted a lot of the shits happening. You think Joe, people thought that Joe Flacco was going to come back? and lead the Browns and be playing out of his mind for the Browns and, and leading them, uh, leading the charge there. Like was, was not on the roster for not on a NFL roster for three months. <clears throat> so yeah, that's how I see it. So Chicago would fi finish eight and nine in this scenario. Chicago fish finishes eight and nine, which is pretty respectable. The Rams are eight and nine. The Seahawks are eight and nine, and the Saints would be eight and nine. So I kind of looked into tiebreakers because I'm like, how the hell? Because I always thought it was head to head, and it was like, well, we didn't play. We lost the Seahawks, but we beat the Rams, and we lost the Saints, and we didn't face the Bears. So my guess is that we would have a better conference record because as of right now, we have four conference wins. And if we run the table, that's three more NFC teams. So the Rams, we would leapfrog, we would uh, get the head-to-head -head on them. And we'd also have own the head-to-head -head on Philadelphia, even though that's not a tiebreaker. But we would finish up with seven conference wins, which I guess would be more than the Rams, Saints, and Bears. That's my guess. That's the only thing I can think of. So that's the uh, delusional playoff picture. Yeah, I can see it in my mind's eye. 